All right, the fudge factor. You'll hear us uh, use the term fudge factor um, a lot, and really, we're just talking about price confirmation. All right, the fudge factor is simply our description of how much the stock has to trade beyond a point before we consider it uh, confirmed. So just uh, keep that in mind in terms of a term. Now, the way that we figure out price confirmation or the fudge factor is that we use a percentage of the market's average true range. Now, I am going to take this opportunity to explain in detail what the average true range is. Uh, this is a uh, this is a question that we get a lot uh, for a number of different reasons. Before I go into all the detail, I want to say that if you don't really have an interest in the math of how this gets calculated, you don't need to know it. All right, you really don't need to know it. What you do need to know is that what it represents is a measure of the market's volatility. And what you do need to understand from a trading perspective <clears throat> is that using a measure of, markets of the market's volatility to help determine your stops and your targets is a critically important way to establish a trading system. All right? So if you understand when you're building a trading system that you really should be incorporating some measure of, that reflects the market's volatility that you're trading, then you've got what you need. If you want to get into a little bit more detail, then you, you can look and see uh, how your measure of volatility is calculated. Now, I'm going to go through uh, average true range here, and I'm going to compare it quickly to average range, uh, simply so that the, the people who really want to understand the nuts and bolts of this have this to come back to and refer to. One of the uh, common questions we get is, um, how many days do you look at to determine the market's volatility in your measure? Now, we use the 10-day average of the daily average true range. 10 days, 15 days, 20 days, just be consistent, all right? We use 10 days. We feel it's a good measure um, for uh, stocks that could get incredibly volatile because of news and then settle down. At the same time, you don't want one big day to skew your volatility uh, measure. So I would say, as a rule of thumb, if you get under 10 days, you're going to have a situation where your measure of volatility is um, really moving around a lot. If you get uh, substantially over uh, 10 days, then you're going to just have a much more dampened um, measure of volatility, which means that if the market has an unusual period of volatility, it's going to take longer for you, your system to adjust to that. So, for example, let's say a market consolidates um, or really doesn't have a whole lot of volatility for several months, and then it breaks out. When it breaks out, it's going to have increased volatility. Well, your system's not really going to reflect that um, if you're using a 30-day or 60-day um, average. But if you have a 10-day average, then after a couple days of breakout-like action, your system is going to um, reflect it. So 10 days, we think, is a good number. Uh, I think it's more important to keep it consistent, um, but I wouldn't get hung up on that detail. So what is a daily average to range? It's hard to find a formula that um, really says this in an intuitive way, but I think the pic I'm hoping the pictures here will explain how this works. Essentially, when we say average 
true range. This is the way I like to think about it. Rather than just the average range, what makes this the quote unquote true range? Well, the idea behind the average true range calculation is that you're trying to measure how much volatility the stock had today relative to its close from the prior day. So what, it, what, what you do is you take the greatest of these three possible uh, scenarios for the stock. First, you look at the range of the day. So if you, each, each one of these bars here represents a daily bar. First, you look at the range for the day. Simply A, sorry, the high minus the low. That's A. Figure out what that value is, and um, that's one option. The second option is to look at the distance from the prior day's close all the way up to the current day's high. All right. Now, the reason to do this, and I try to illustrate it in the picture, is that if there's a gap, you're going to account for that gap, right? Whereas if we're just looking in situation A, we're just looking at the high or the low, that stock could have gapped up five dollars, but if the range for the day was only fifty cents, you're going to be saying that that stock's range for the day was fifty cents. Now, in the case of B, if the stock gaps up five dollars, you're going to count from the prior close all the way up to the high of that day. So you're going to include that five dollars in the calculation. Now, the other thing is that if you've got a really small range today, let's so so let's say this bar didn't actually gap but it came down to here okay so my range for the day if I was using the A calculation would just be this but the truth is that the stock did move from the prior close so the true range starts from the close and goes all the way up to the highest point all right now C is the same exact thing as B, just in reverse. So in other words, you're looking at the prior close down to the low of the current day, and you're taking that value. All right, so take a step back. Now you've got basically three different calculations, and you take the one that has the largest value. All right, now uh, for some, that may seem uh, a little complicated, but if you think about it in these terms, if you really just compare, and I'm not saying you have to do this in your head, but visually to see the difference, if you just compare the, the range for the day, not even considering yesterday, and then compare to see whether or not um, or how far the market has really moved from the prior day's close. Is it a lot either up or or down? And if it's down, then you're going to want to use the low to the close. And if it's up, you're going to want to use the high to the close. Now the truth is, you're not going to be doing this by hand anyway, right? Uh, you're going to have a, uh, a computer doing the calculation, all right? But everybody always wants to know what's uh, the ATR, how's it calculated, this is how it's calculated. Every day you find the day's ATR, and then, as I said, we're looking at 10 days. So we'll take the 10-day average of each day's highest number here. So... What's the difference between the average true range and the average range? Well, as I just said, the average true range really is accounting for, or will account for situations like um, gaps. So where can you find it? As I just said, most trading platforms have it. Uh, so look on your uh, trading platform for the indicator, average true range. 
Um, they may not display it really nicely in the chart the same way we have it uh, displayed in our charts uh, that you'll see, but they you can just pull up pull it up as an indicator. The thing you have to remember, however, is that you want the average true range as measured by your daily data. So if you ask for your average true range on an intraday chart on your platform, it could be calculating the average true range for that particular chart. So if you've got a five minute chart on your on your system and you ask for the 10 period average true range, it could be calculating average true range for the last 10 five minute periods. So just be careful that that's not happening. Um, and most likely that will be what's happening unless you make some special adjustments. So what you what you likely have to do is put the average true range indicator on your daily charts and that's where you get your number. All right, not from your intraday charts. All right, on you'll see on our on our platform on TradeStation, we have a, a an indicator that we got from tradeformers.com that uses intraday um, data to calculate a daily ATR value. All right, but that's very specific. So just be careful about that because again, this is this is an important calculation. That being the measure of volatility that you're using, and one you want to be consistent. Two, you want to make sure that it's in fact right. So most trading platforms have it. I have also uh, been told I haven't double checked that StockCharts.com uh, has it as an indicator. Um, and uh, so that's free and that's an easy way uh, to get it if you don't have it. Uh, we're working on getting it uh, to show up in uh, hot scans so that you'll be able to get it straight from our site as well. Now, if for some reason uh, it doesn't exist on your platform, uh, you, you do have the other option, which is to just use the average range. All right, Instead of average true range, I'm almost positive you'd have average range. Um, and you can use that as well. All right. We use average true range for the benefits that um, we just I just explained, but um, average range will work as well. All right. So that's how we calculate ATR. ATR is important, remember, because that's what we're going to use as the basis for our time conf or price confirmation.